I know it, brother. I know it. Um, but like you're starting this, right, with, yeah. with the uh, – I think this is more than football. I've, I've mm -hmm. watched a lot of your stuff, man, and um, really hitting on the different aspects of it, the, the mental health, the, the why and the how, how these kids are thinking. Right. right? And, and being able to work that – this is the this is the biggest and strongest muscle in the body. Yes. Right? We got to be training this just as much as we're training everything. That's dope. And yeah, you never know the people that impact you for the rest of your life. And I had a lot of coaches that impact me. That's why I love – doing this as well and what you mm -hmm. said is big and in setting that foundation for the kids is important and sometimes i know the optics like you know alabama big sec big d1 a lot of kids get into the recruiting process and that's all they think about mm -hmm. and what my friends that's why i like doing this what we talk about is going to a place where they're going to help you become a man that's very important important football is just a sport is here for a moment a moment in time just like you explained and i feel like we need to paint the real picture for kids and understand you use it as a platform it's not you football yep. does not define the man you are the man playing the sport too many times we take it as oh i'm a football player i'm an athlete that's just what you do who yep. are you as a man and i feel like that's very important and instead of people just, you know, shipping their kids off, you should have a real conversation with the coaches that sit in your living room. Yep. It matters, man. It matters. And, and a lot of guys are just worried about X's and O's or what school can I go and take a picture in front of a Lamborghini or how many rings they got on their desk. You know, you to, for me, and, and I found this out really going into my job, you know, the, the, the adult life and choosing my career. Right. For me, it's more about the why they're doing it. Right. The do do our uh, core values match up? Mm. Are we in this for the same thing? Because if I get a, if I get around and it's even another coach, I get around a coach and all you're talking to me about is how you're trying to elevate and get to another school. Right. That's totally opposite of why I'm doing this. Right. Because I, I had opportunities to, to elevate and be on the college level in the GA part and and really trying to get there, man. But like I said, understanding that. Yeah, I was lucky to have these coaches in college, bro, but the foundation I was built in high school, mm -hmm. like it starts so much sooner than that. Yes, it does. Right? And I, and I want to touch as many kids as humanly possible. attack actions you got to know I love you you know what I'm saying and that's something that everybody if we really want to be great we got to come together and, and, and all talk to each other like that.
talking to EJ's gym, a guy to elevate your mindset. And yo, I have a special guest on the line, a fellow lineman. I'll let him introduce himself. How you doing today, EJ? I'm, I'm Jordan Budwig, uh, CEO and, and co-owner of, of Five Star Studs, along with my partner, Daniel Luque. Um, uh, born and raised here in South Florida, man. Grew up in Davie. Actually grew up a baseball player my whole life. Uh, back when I was growing up, we had weight limit in, uh, uh, in Pee Wee football. So I actually never got to strap on, uh, you know, the shoulder, shoulder, shoulder uh, and helmet till actually eighth grade. Uh -huh. um, so that's when the, the football career started for me. I actually was able to continue my career over to, uh, to FIU, where I was able to meet Donald, uh, your cousin. Yeah. And um, was able to have a successful career there, man. I, I played for uh, six years total. I actually had back-to-back -back injuries uh, right in the middle of my career. So I started 24, sat out 24, and, and then started the next 24. So, um, wow. 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 yeah, man, very, very interesting uh, college experience. And then, um, you know, was able to, to actually finish under Butch Davis mm -hmm. uh, at the end of my career. So um, I had, you know, moved into a more coaching role as I got, you know, more experienced fifth and sixth year guys. Gotcha. Um, that tends to be, you know, the reality of the situation, the more you can bring to the, you know, to the room. Mm -hmm. um, so I was actually lucky enough to, to be able to join that staff uh, after I graduated um, in the volunteer capacity. So okay. uh, Coach Davis really brought me in, man. He actually, um, he actually really made me a part of staff completely where I was able to travel to away games and, okay. and do all that. Uh, one thing about him, he, he really respects you know, people are truly dedicated to it. So as long as he sees that commitment from your side, he, he's one to reciprocate, which is gotcha. something I've always appreciated about him. So was it easier to make that transition, like from playing, right from playing into like a coaching role or that, was that so an easy think, transition? Um, it was easier for me only because of those two years I had for injury. I really, I really took pride in that being what I could bring to the table. Gotcha. Um, you know, cause when I got hurt, I, I was, it was, two weeks out for my junior season. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at that point in time, I had, you know, become a leader in the room and, and, and that was really my unit, or at least that's how I perceived it and, and wanted yeah. to, you know, lead, um, you know, and immediately getting that snatch from me, not, bro, 10 days out from camp. Wow. Um, actually, just, just an incident at, at the beach with a friend and, and uh, dislocating my shoulder uh, on South Beach. Tor lost my whole labrum. So um, it was actually my second time in that same shoulder. Wow. I had one in high school as well. So, um, yeah, that, that was pretty wild. Uh, missed that one and then ended up tearing it again the following spring uh, during my rehab. So, back to back years. So, um, really meant to stay involved and to, and to stay in love. Already really in the room in terms of playing wise. So, mm -hmm. uh, that was just the easiest thing for me, man, to, uh, to stay in it and stay attached was to really take pride in, in that aspect. So. Gotcha. I had already kind of been doing it. Mm -hmm. And then my senior year, uh, we ended up getting a, a transfer uh, from George. And he was a young player and we really needed him to develop. So um, the coaches challenged me to kind of, and during the offseason on one, um, to, to kind of bring him along for the team. Um, you know, coaching was never really something I thought about doing, to be honest. Really? Um, I always had a business mindset, thought I would be, you know, newer, it was always more than I guess in my mind growing up, mm -hmm. um, and and the path my college career took me on, man. From you know through that injury, um, what was really a huge negative part of my life ended up being a huge positive, you know, because right, it, right. it drove me to what I feel like really I was meant to do, man. This is that's really how I feel about coaching. Wow. I find that I find that odd because I was just reading up on you and it says you have the record at for uh, 50 consecutive starts at FIU and you're yeah. talking about an injury. So that happened towards the end of your I don't know how that I took credit for it, right? But yeah. I have the most total. total. Um, yeah, there was two missing between but I, I guess maybe if it if it's a red shirt, it still counts a consecutive. I, I don't really know how that works, <laughs> that's what it says online. So that's, that's what, what I wrote. it says online. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So so how so how was that? So when did you get hurt? Was that on the tail end or was that how did that work? That was right in the middle. So going into my junior year, mm -hmm. um, and then when the spring got hurt again. Gotcha. Um, so I I started as a true freshman, so I was able to use my red shirt, mm -hmm. and then um, due to back to back injury, I peeled for the for uh, I think it's a medical red shirt. That's uh, what okay. they call it. So I was okay. able to get those two uh, right. back and then play another year. Um, so yeah, man, I was able to get six years in. 
Okay. It was uh, definitely irregular, but I enjoyed it. So, do you want to talk about that that first game as a freshman going in the fresh uh, at what into Maryland? Into Maryland. Yeah. Into Maryland. Yeah, at Maryland. At Maryland. At Maryland. It was funny. True uh, freshman, right out of high school. Yeah, man. Uh-huh. Yeah, I um, I was extremely confident, man. I, uh-huh. I was a very, very confident kid. I heard. Uh, I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so coming in there, man, I, I had, you know, I, I hadn't been a football player my whole life, but mm-hmm. I've been playing baseball since I was three years old. Uh, sorry, if you see my dogs get in the way of the camera, mm-hmm. that's all moving. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I grew up a baseball player and really, um, you know, I, I was in the elite level of that. Uh, a lot of the guys I played with at 12, 13 years old are, are in the pros and oh, wow. know, I've been, we made it to college. So we were traveling around the state of Florida every weekend, you know, playing in tournaments and, and really mm-hmm. finishing first or second for the most part. So that elite competition and that level um, never really scared me. I, I started on the varsity baseball team as an eighth grader. Okay. Um, so that that spotlight, I guess, whether it was naivety, you know, at that time, I, I don't really know what it was, but that com- confidence was never really my issue. Um, okay. I love it. Yeah, so stepping into that, I was excited, man. The, the big, the bigger the stage for me, the 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 better I found myself playing. Uh huh. Um, I think it actually goes back to my childhood, man. I uh, I grew up a, a huge Hurricane fan, going to games okay. with my dad. Miami, big time college football, bro. That that's in my blood. You we know what all, I'm saying? So we all love Miami, baby. Yeah, bro. The mm-hmm. bigger the stage, the, the better for me, to be honest. So that really wasn't in my head, but you know, actually having conversations with other people, I guess. They were worried about it, right? Like talking to talking to Donald about it. You know, he was like, "Look, I really was worried about you. Like the whole first half. Like, you know, you get out there and some people freeze under that spotlight. But um, not for me, man. I was just excited. I was excited okay. to show what I could do. And actually, I had my first uh, missed assignment. Uh, it was like mid second quarter, mm-hmm. and um, it really wasn't a big deal, man. It was a slide protection, and I had just missed, you know, something small. Mm-hmm. And I remember coming off the sideline and my O-line coach jumped me. He's like, that's that freshman mistake. I'm like, you, <laughs> now you got to settle down. I'm like, coach, it's like second quarter. Like, I know, I'm, right? I'm, I'm like into the flow already. Like, <laughs> right. But, you know, everybody's kind of worried about that as a young player. So now that was an awesome experience, man, going up there and be able to start beating, you know, have that my, my first career start as a true freshman. All right, that's dope having that mindset. And, you know, just in my comparison, I, I can't really compare it to the, the big, big states. Cause I, like I told you, I played D2 ball. I got to shout out my yeah. school, St. All. But I came in and I played as a, as a true freshman as well. And just having a mindset of you can, you know what I mean? So it's all up to you in the position that you put yourself in as an athlete. Like, I can. Because other people are going to doubt you just because you're a freshman. They'll be like, oh, he's not going to pick it up. Oh, he's not big enough. Oh, whatever the case may be. But it's up to you to push all that aside and focus on your goal. Like, no, I'm playing as a freshman right now. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely my mindset. And, you know, one thing I didn't know, you know, at the time, but what I what I feel like I actually stress to my kids while they're going through it, mm-hmm. like they're trying to give you as much fire. They're trying to bring as much as that real game feel to practice. Right. And the only way for, for a coach to do that is to be on you mm-hmm. is the test when you're tired constantly mm-hmm. giving you reps so bro that that freshman year camp i mean and you can you can even gas guys that were there with me yeah they put me through it like <laughs> that was the hardest thing i've ever had to do bro okay. that, that freshman year camp okay. and i'm i'm 30 minutes from the house right so they say oh you're not very far from home but bro, you're going from 5 30 in the morning to 10 o'clock at night right there, there is no for the month of august there is no anything but football nothing they're going to try to break you. Yes. That's what their job is. Yes. You know, and I, I, I didn't know that going in, man. So it was um, it was extremely hard, bro. So when I first got there, I really wanted to get around the older guys, guys like your cousin Donald and, and the leaders of the unit. What, what are those guys doing? Right. In right. the weight room, yeah. you know, how they thinking? What's their mentality? Because clearly I need to get on that level in every other aspect to, to be a part of that group. And I, I think a lot of young guys get the feeling of, okay, let me let me buddy up with another little freshman and kind of just – let me just go under the radar and kind of just stay smooth. And I, I think that's the wrong mentality, man, mm. it, especially if you're trying to play early gotcha. and, and often. That's definitely a great advice to get to a young guy is to look at what the older guys are doing, look at the, what the accomplished guys are doing and follow in their footsteps. And, and maybe then you'll get that same opportunity to do what they're doing, you know what I mean, instead of – 
fall into the back and which I see that every year you see the the guys that come up step up to the plate and you see guys that kind of like fall back and kind of shy away from the spotlight because they're freshmen they're like okay I'll wait to my sophomore year you never want to do that you never want to do that you want to showcase your talent if you're ready right away what do you have no, to say no to that and I, and I think the biggest thing for me is let let someone else put the brakes on you right right like even in the weight room and stuff I, you know coming in Donald Donald was going into his junior year he's he's squatting 600 pounds and stuff I've never thought about putting on a bar <laughs> you know but seeing my, where my maxes were I didn't want to go off what my what you know the bar was set for me I was going to try to get as close to that as I could right. before the season so you know failure is okay but mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm over if I'm trying to overreach those professional strength coaches that you're working with at that college level, they're going to know how to, you know, put some brakes on you and get there. But if, if all they're trying to do is pull you up, right. that's, a total, that's a totally different equation. Let them, let them slow you down, man. Don't let, right. like you said, you got to be your biggest advocate. Mm -hmm. they, they don't know you, right. right? They recruited you. They got you. In the, they've met you for like five minutes, gotcha. you know, two months ago. They have no idea who you are. Who you are is what you show them, mm -hmm. you know, so. That's dope. So tell me, how did the mindset? I don't know. You played at university in Broward. How did your mindset in high school help you transition into playing? You know, right away as a freshman in at FIU. Yeah, you know, it's it's another thing that I look back on, and I'm I'm extremely thankful for, man. I my my coaching staff at, at university school my senior year was was a college coaching staff as far as I'm concerned. Really? We got Coach Roger Harriet was was our head coach. He's now the head coach at St. Thomas Aquinas. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think he's got five state championships now and an incredible resume. Mm -hmm. um, my offensive line coach, Coach Luque, ended up taking over the head job at U School uh, after Coach Harry left. Um, an incredible record. I think he was winning at a 70% clip uh, over four years. Uh, multiple playoff and appearances and ended up um, making it to the state finals and losing. Uh, Ryan Schneider, who's now the head coach at, at Cocoa High School uh, okay. in Cocoa Beach, um, was our was our OC Kevin Beard uh, played at the Houston University of Miami. He's now coaching on the yes. college level. Was our receivers Receiver. coach? I remember him. Yeah, uh, Coach Wilson. Uh, both his sons are now in the NFL. Quincy and, and uh, Marco played at Florida. You know, he's an, an elite DB coach and, and football trainer in, in this level. Was our was our D coordinator. So Wayne Blair, our, our D line coach, is now coaching with us at Five Star Studs. You know, an, an elite D lineman played at Tulane. So. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to learn from the best. And, and you right. know, they told us why we were there and, and we didn't really know it. But our practices were structured on call. We were on a schedule. We're moving indie period, water break. Like, we're moving as a college. So right. that really, to me, was an easy transition. Mm -hmm. Like, some of the smaller schools I took visits to um, during my process, man, it, would, it, it hurt them, right? Because I'm coming down here like, man, we're grinding harder than that. Like, right like my team can come in and, and give y'all something like and that's not <laughs> that's not really where i want to be you know so uh -huh. i think i think we put 13 guys d1 from my just my senior class okay so it, it was it was as close to college football as you could probably get in high school okay that's 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 man yeah i i, I played at miami central so I, I believe in, as a coach, that you set the environment for your athletes. And Absolutely. just like you said, you can set the environment for your athletes and your athletes will come up there and go get it if you set that structure up for them. But it's up to you to have that mentality as a coach and have higher goals like champion goals or have goals to set your kids up to be better athletes in the future. You know, that's Absolutely. up to you. Absolutely. No, right. definitely. And it's something I, I want to start as young as possible, man, because, man, I got, I got to college and, and you look around and some guys don't know how to get into a stance, wow. ha have never put knee braces on before and, and walking out there with them on the wrong leg. Like, you know, some guys are in a culture shock and, and seeing yeah. the difference. I'm thinking everybody's going to college is, is on my level as ter in right. terms of fundamentals. What I came to find out was I, I was extremely blessed, man, to to have the coaches that I had and the foundation at, at university school that I had because right. that transition was very smooth for me. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was used to being pushed like that, you know, get comfortable being uncomfortable was something they right. were preaching to us constantly. So, con, you know, continuing to try to elevate my game was, was something they drilled into us constantly. You know, gotcha. we're trying to be great, not average. Okay. <laughs> so is that what you instill? We, we have five star studs. You know, I want to talk about your college career but I want to talk about the athletes that you helped 
So how long have you been working with five star studs or training athletes on the side? So um, this actually started under Coach Luque. Um, he had a brand uh, while I was in high school and, um, you know, was really targeted to focus on our guys. And uh, Coach, Coach Luque took an, a, a unique approach to it. You know, a lot of the time, offensive linemen are underappreciated, man. We're, Very much we're so. the, the last one to be thanked and the first one to be cursed out, <laughs> you know? So um, he, he found a lot of ways to get us excited about playing that position, man. Uh, we actually had a, ch a championship belt the, the from SmackDown, Friday Night SmackDown, okay. the big gold one, man. <laughs> so whoever got the best grade from the week, you were repping that on your backpack like all week. Uh, um, so little things like that, man, take us out to eat and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mixing in and making it fun, man. At the end of the day, this is a game. It is. You know, it is. Kids are extremely blessed to have opportunities now, especially with the stuff going on that you can make money at 18 years old to feed your family. Yeah. You know, but for me as a coach, I, th I think that's really important to, to constantly remind these kids of why you're why they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I, I get down to like 10 and, and 11 and 12 year olds and a lot of coaches, you know, kind of kind of treat that relationship as more. I'm telling you what to do. Right. So right. I want my kids to understand why, because I, I feel like when they do one, one these kids aren't these kids aren't dumb, man. 10, 11, 12 years old, they are very aware of who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. When they ask questions and the reaction is, I'm gonna get frustrated or I'm gonna why this, why that, you know, I think that's wrong. Like as a coach, isn't it my job to figure out what's the best way that kid's gonna learn? Mm. Like there's some kids I gotta scream at because they react to that the best. Right. But there's some kids, if I scream at them, I won't, I won't see them back for two days because that's all they're thinking. Right. So if I want to get the best out of my player, isn't that my responsibility to understand who I'm coaching, how to coach them? Right. I love and, and, and I'm open and honest with my guys. You're all going to be coached different because you're all on different levels. How can I coach you all the same? How does that make any sense? Mm. It, to me, it doesn't. So I start that, man, and, and from younger. Right now I'm coaching uh, in Lauderdale Lakes, the, the 12 and under team. Mm -hmm. But I coached guys yesterday in the Saturday session as, as young as nine. Right, um, right. You know, and they're they're doing the same things that my that my high school and college guys are doing from a movement perspective. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do the same, so I understand what you're saying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and and to me, it's like why why wouldn't I? Because mm -hmm. then once once I can build that foundation, under getting a guy to understand how to transfer weight, yeah, how to explode out of stance, how to activate their hips into the block, mm -hmm. the right posture, and then get all those things conditioned and trained. Now all I'm doing is teaching them concepts, right, and applying right. what they already know, right. Right. You know, I, so many coaches get into, well, do this on this play and this on this play. Right. I don't want my guys knowing plays. I want them to really understand the game. Mm -hmm. Like, but the difference between inside zone and outside zone for me is the angle of your hips. Right. And an emphasis on what arm to get strong with at a certain right. time. But I want you coming off the same way. Right. You know what I'm saying? So th that that's a big thing for me is the why. Um, and, and I think a lot of coaches, man, whether it's, you know, irritation or you know, a lack of want to or, or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. um, they don't take that time. Mm -hmm. right? Like while my kids are getting water, I'm, I'm gonna give them the reason why we were doing that. So they, they come back hungry. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. if, I, if I hear something in the back, like, man, why are we even doing this? I'm not, I'm not going to just snap on them and make them run a lap because they don't want to be out there. Like, bro, right. they're, they're 12. They, they don't know why they're doing this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like right. to, to me, it's an education moment. So that, right. that's the biggest difference I think I see in, in my coaching philosophy and style. Mm -hmm. um, now, don't get me wrong. Once the once once the expectation is set, yeah. I let the player set the expectation. Right. You, you show me, and you're telling me how hard you want to be coached. Right. You you want to be a Division One athlete. You're in your junior and senior year, and and you you say, Coach, I, I don't know why I don't have scholarships. <laughs> I'm about to show you the level you need to be on to get an offer. Right. Like that's hey, how, that's, talk that's to him, Coach. Wait, tell. I want you to to explain because you played on a D1 level and I'll accept my like I said my stature I played on a D2 level. You can explain to them further. How what process did you take as an athlete? What was the intensity of your mindset and what just period just you as a senior? What what was you can you explain what was your senior year like or junior year well, prior my, to my, my process was uh was definitely different than I expected going in, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So I actually tore my shoulder um, at my end of my sophomore season. Okay. So I actually kept that under wraps. I didn't. I didn't tell nobody um, that I was getting surgery, thinking I can come back for that next season. Now, where that ended up hurting me was I didn't go to those those camps my junior year, all those okay. college camps. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was the biggest thing that hurt me. So I actually didn't have a D1 offer until, bro, two weeks before signing day, three weeks oh. before signing day. Okay, okay, okay. It was in that when those new coaches got hired. Yes. Because Cristobal left and then Coach Turner yes. got hired. So I was at, I was offered under Turner and not Cristobal. Bro, I had to take a visit to Florida Tech out in Melbourne, <laughs> Melbourne Florida, bro. <laughs> what is what, so Florida Tech? What what like is that NAI? What are they? It was they were a first year program. Uh, their game stadium was a high school up there in Melbourne, and I, I don't want to trash them by any means. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, to me, man, I, I had never played sports at not the highest level. Right. So I really didn't know how to grasp taking a step backwards. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my mindset, man. And then um, the offers actually started rolling in. What I didn't know, right? The other lineman on my team who was elite. He was about 6'5", 6'6", 330. Right. Bigger guy, different position, could handle that weight. What when was your people, size coming in? Like I was, I was 6'4", 315, 320. Ooh. Now, what I should have been telling people was like 305, 310. Got gotcha. you. What most kids don't understand about this recruiting process, and what I certainly didn't know, is they call it recruiting, right? They're supposed to come get you. Right. And these coaches don't have time for that. Mm. They're grinding 24 seven. They got time to be dialing those top five guys. Right. Those, those, those guys, they, they're trying to steal from somewhere else. Right. If, if you don't have an offer from them by your junior year, you're not one of those five guys. Mm. Okay? Now you might be on that bubble, right? If those guys go somewhere else, you're in there. And if you're a bubble guy in a, at a D one level, that might be the case for four five, six different schools. Now, the difference on whether you're going to be the guy in that bubble group to get the trigger pulled on you, to me, is how bad do you want it? You need to be going to all these camps and getting in their face, right. constantly showing them what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and again, I didn't know it. Man, I, I have college coaches, friends all over the country. When I send them a text, I don't expect a text back the, like that same day. Mm. Those guys are getting done with their, with their guys at 8, 9, 30, 9 o'clock. Right. And then they got a family to go home to. Right. right. It, and and I, I was missing that totally at the high school level, completely mm -hmm. and totally. Mm -hmm. My thing was I, I expected to be in a recruit. I really thought, thought I was going to end up going to Miami. Um, you know, like, like I said, 11 other guys alongside me in my senior class had Division One offers. Right. Um, so I was kind of surprised, man. But, but um, you know, looking back on it and being more real with myself, right. because I played baseball, bro, I didn't have my first college – off-season weight room lifting program until college. I was never lifting weights in the off-season. I was playing baseball. Now, granted, I was a really strong kid, but when it comes down to the difference between one or two guys that I'm, I'm really not competing with the dude across the street. I'm competing with this kid in Arizona who the son of FIU looked at last week, and he's trying to figure out who's got more flexibility in their hips naturally to, to throw an offer to, man. It, it's coming down to preference at that point. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're a kid sitting at home and you're wondering why you don't have offers of scholarships, you're probably not in, in, in good enough shape enough, Ooh, right? Okay. Like you're, you're probably not as strong as, as the top recruits at your position. Like the, it's not a coincidence. Right. And, that, and that's what I try to tell these kids. They're not hating on you, bro. They have bosses to answer to that make millions True. of dollars. True. And they're on a short leash. Right. They only got two one maybe two for sure recruiting classes that they can invest in before they're either winning and they're staying or they're losing and they're fired right and right. that's just the reality of the industry we're stepping into right so mm -hmm. as from a kid's perspective especially now man it's going to be more and more of a business as these kids are making more and more money right. these coaches are not going to feel sorry for these kids at all right right at all sure. Sure. You're, they're out here making money and, and it's going to get more and more savage. So if, if you're not bringing that to the table, that hunger, asking your coaches questions more and more on what you need to know, mm -hmm. you're going to fall off at some point, man. Mm -hmm. and, and that bark is constantly moving. Right. It's constantly moving. And, that, and that's something also as a player I didn't understand. I thought, you know, I'm, there's a point where I'm good, right? I'm, I'm the captain senior year of my team. Well, guess what? You get drafted to the NFL <laughs> back to the bottom. Right. Back to, you right. know what I'm saying? And, and oh, it never no, right. stops. Yeah, and especially if you're a bubble guy in that league, right? Yeah, you you your bottom 
20 guys on that uh, 53 man roster, bro, your job is week to week. Mm. And and folks don't really understand that either, man. Unless unless you're getting drafted and they've already paid you your money, right? Bro, you are earning your spot every single day. <laughs> For sure. And I I don't know if people understand the mindset that you have to have in order to be an athlete because it's so cutthroat and you have to be able to take real constructive criticism. Just like you explained, if you're not one of those top guys, you're not one of those top lift lifters, you're not one of those guys who stand out on film, then you can't get upset if you don't have an offer. Let's just be real. Let's go ahead and put in more work in the off season. Let's go ahead and lift harder. Let's go ahead and do the things that you can control as an athlete to help you get there. Because if a guy gives you an offer, that's out of your control. But what's in your control is how you perform, how you go in the weight room, how much work you put in the off season, right? Then you can turn eyes and coaches, coaches will start looking then, I guarantee you that. No, absolutely. And I, and I think um, what's more important too, man, is understanding that if you get awarded a college scholarship, a division one scholarship, mm -hmm. you're already the 1% of high school football players in this country, in the world. Yes. You're already the 1%. And I see a lot of kids down here in South Florida and that, you know, their friends are getting offered because we're, we're a hotbed for, for division yeah. one football. Yeah. So a lot of people know someone with a college who's going to go play college football if you're on the team, right? So, and then these kids just expected to come, bro. You being the best on your team has nothing to do with it. You being the best in your county has nothing to do with it. You being the best in your state has nothing to do with it. That's real. Those coaches feel like they have the best, however many D1 schools, 140 something. They have the best 140 something coaches at that position. They need numbers, height, weight, yep. length, strength. And yep. they believe that they can turn those numbers into the best football players available and it, mm. and it translates just to, just to college like right. you said I, I had 50 career starts underneath my belt right i ended up winning the offensive mvp as a left guard my senior year wow that's dope and when i got to pro day they did not give one single l <laughs> bro i i slipped on my 5 10 5 i'm thinking yeah i got two reps right that's just a yeah. for sure thing Seahawks Scott looked me dead in my eye. He said, nah, bro, you're good. Hit it to the Eldra. Wow, they didn't even give you another chance. Didn't even get another rep. Wow. Bro, it, it's, they, they really, bro, they don't have time for feelings or, or to, to get to know you, man. They really don't. And, and that, that savagery never changes. So what I try to hit with my guys first, before we're even getting to technique, bro, mm -hmm. we're going to understand leverage. We're going to mm -hmm. understand how to come out of our hips. We're going to understand how to transfer weight. Yeah. how to do all the foundational things that translate to you being able to be a good player. Yes, yes. And, we got to start you, there. And you hit that on the head with leverage. But one thing, just being up here, because, you know, I'm from Miami. Like I said, played at Miami Central, had good coaching. Came mm -hmm. up here. I'm up, up in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. And it's some good it's, it's, it's some good coaching out here. And it's some pretty bad coaching. I'm not going to lie to you. And yeah. the foundation is your stance. In order to be able to transfer weight, if you're in a bad stance, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. And we have coaches here who will have like a wing T system, but want to put in pass plays, but have the kids heavy, heavy in their stance. And I'm like, scratch. I go to games sometimes and I'm like, man, it, 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 it baffles me because I train some guys on those teams. So I have to teach them how to get out of different stance. So when they go to these camps, they can help themselves get scholarships because they can get out of a regular stance. They can pass pro and um, run run block out of the same stance. Yep. So how is important is, is a stance or building that foundation of a stance for offensive line? To, for me, it's huge. And then I actually just started uh, with the guys over at St. Thomas last week. That's what we did. It was the first thing we did. Is I, I believe the same thing. And, and in college, I have a process to it. And I walk them, you come up, set your inside foot, your depth, set your depth. If guard yeah. is, you know, toe to end step, tackle is toe to heel, or those longer guys can can get a little deeper, right? Right. I tell my guys, you need to be able to feel powerful in your stance. Mm. If you're if you're in a stance, right, and everyone's going to be different, right? Everyone's more flexible or less at certain parts of their body. But if you if if you feel like you can't drive a 300 pound guy right out of your stance, 
to me, we got problems. Wow. Again, you don't know how to load your weight in your stance, or you're not in a position to be able to do that at all. So a lot of those more flexible guys, and that's, that's who I really run more into trouble with, those guys who are so flexible that they don't feel it, right? If you're flexible in your hips, they start in that super wide stance because they're right. comfortable there. Mm -hmm. But guess what? If I start that wide, once I take my zone step, now I'm in a split. Yep, yep. And, I and you're off balance. balance. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Guys who are more flexible in, the, in their glutes, they like to sit down lower in their stance. Right. Well, if you're sitting so far down that all your weight's on your heels, mm -hmm. how can I expect you to fire off the football? Mm -hmm. So to me, man, that's that's huge. And it's where I start. Right. I, I like to start every year from the from the very bottom. Right. right. Because if I'm hitting that first and I'm installing a process that you understand from day one. Right. When it's the fourth quarter and you're so tired, you can't even think that process should be there. Mm -hmm. Right. So at a minimum, I'm getting in a stance for success. Right. Not a stance where I'm bent over and I'm looking half dead and I have no chance. Right. You know, so, so it's not, that, that's something I'm very passionate about as well. Right. So as a trainer, do you run into that where kids, you know, have to go, you know, they have to follow what their coaches are doing and they need to, you know, prepare for a camp. Do you ever run into that? Well, I, in South Florida, it's a little less common because a lot we're running a lot of spread down here. Right. Uh, right. SWP. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the best application I have of that for me mm -hmm. is my my 12 U team. Right. So right. I have about 13 guys and they're going they're going defense Monday, Tuesday mm -hmm. and offense Wednesday, Thursday. Now, those okay. kids are the same kids. Gotcha. Right? They get confused. So when I get them at the sled on Wednesday, I'm like, look, we got to reset. You, yeah. You're not on the balls of your feet anymore. We're not on yeah. our toes. We, we're not like you got a base. We're on our insteps. Gotcha. Like change that mindset mm. because we're not any we're not doing anything the same. Mm -hmm. Right. And then there's a few kids you have to, to, to correct more and more. But I think I think setting the tone early right. that completely flipping the fundamental. I won't ever do offense defense on the same day. And I really like I like all my drills in the day to progress. Right. So if we're doing zone stuff, most likely the first thing we're going to do is come out of our hips and make sure our hips are getting unlocked. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to drill it on two whistles. So make sure they've been transferring that weight properly in their steps. Are they able to hold it and, you know, still be moving forward? And then I'm going to put it all together. Right. Mm -hmm. So that indie period of the first 35 minutes, they should all be the same. Like I want one drill to lead into another. So by the time we get the inside run, all you've been doing all day is inside zone. Mm -hmm. So if I can get mad at you about something, it's about having that correct. Right. Yeah. And then the next day we'll probably focus on something else. So I, I like to, to build my day like that. Uh, to build the practice like that. And I, I think it, when they're constantly doing it, three, four drills in a row, having to work on the same similar type thing, mm -hmm. you know, it might be a different focus. By the time they get to a team practice, I feel like it's going to translate, especially more for the younger kids. Well, I, I teach, um, I teach bring the punch on the second step. On the second I, step? Okay. So for me, for me, it's, I got to get those two in the ground quick. Okay. If the two, if the second step's not in the ground, you know, we're fighting on one leg. Okay. For the most part. And we're not strong there. So I, I drilled my centers this morning. They got no neutral zone. So it's even smaller. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I told them is a lot of the times, you know, you might not really go anywhere, but even if you pick it up right, left, at least your base is set. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm not overextended because I only took one step in the ground. And now it's really, my hips are really coming into key. That's what's going to get the guy moving off the ball. Right. But if I don't, if I don't have that base in the ground, I'm sorry. Bro. Yo, you fine. Oh, wow. Athena, go. <laughs> yeah. in the room, room, thanks. Um, go, go, go with your mommy. Come, go. There we go. It's all good. <laughs> thanks, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, I forgot what I was saying. No, you were talking about you was talking about the base. Well, you was about to talk about the importance of the foundation of the base of taking yeah. the first and second. So, first. so for me, I wanna I wanna bring that base with me, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm only taking one step, to me, this is this is an overextended position, okay. no matter how small that first step was. Gotcha. So I gotta get my base back underneath me. To me, that's most important, getting that second step in the ground. So again, drilling that, I go one step at a time, and then we're focusing on time and that punch. Right. So I'm only going two steps and kind of follow into that third and fourth, mm -hmm. but drilling that first. If we don't, if we're not bringing the punch with that second step and, and have everything coming through at once, mm -hmm. we're not going to be as strong as we can be. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, and to me, if you can't get two steps in the ground that quick, your weight's probably not right in your stance mm. to me. Okay. Um, so that, that's how I teach it. Okay, so what about the difference of coming out of a two-point stance and exerting force compared to coming out of a three-point stance? 
how do you teach that so it, it is it's it's definitely something we got to get used to um and and coming from the pro style system um from my freshman and sophomore year it was a drastic difference getting flipped to that two-point stance and now we're going all sideways um so that was something for me mentally i had to find a way to kind of all right i'm gonna do what they're asking me to do as much as i can but i know how physical i'm trying to play right right so finding that happy medium um to, to be able to play kind of both ways was interesting bro i got switched to a two-point stance now and i and i was two years out from playing any sort of football Really? So, hmm. you know, having to learn a new stance on top of that, <laughs> I came back in spring and I actually I actually had my hands set in front of me in my two point stance because that's how you want to talk about how important hands are right. for me. My game, that's how important it was that I had tight hands. Right. And right. I was able to deliver that strike with tight hands, mm -hmm. especially coming off a hurt shoulder. Right. So I was I would actually sit like a they call me the praying mantis. My yeah. hands was up like this because that's how that's how nervous I was to not have them involved. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I eventually, you know, came out of that <laughs> at the end of summer and was down low. But I think, I think to me, I, when I install stance, mm -hmm. I want them to be in a position where they, that front hand can get picked up and put down, mm -hmm. right? To, all my leverage should be rolled into my body. So the only thing really changing should be picking that hand up and kind of rolling my chest forward a little bit. Right. But if you don't feel that same kind of power in your lower body as if you had your hand on the ground, to, to me, we need to, we need to get as close to that as possible. Okay, so I noticed a drill too. You you talk about your hands, where you have the kids rolling the tennis ball. Yeah, so where did yeah. you get that drill from? Uh, I actually got that from Coach Mogridge. Um, he's uh, the offensive line coach at uh, USF now. Um, yeah, and the thought process behind drill. it is I'm really steal that drill. I like it. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. I love yeah. it too. Uh -huh. um, and and to that drill for for your feet is mm -hmm. to really work on the transitions, right? Okay. Keeping that weight consistent, constantly changing direction unpredicted so at the end i come up and check them right i check and make sure that weight is solid and if it's not they better reset it to where it is okay. right and the whole thing behind the tennis ball is i don't ever want our, my offensive linemen to get into a rhythm with their punch right to have their set you see a lot of guys that kind of wind their arms with their set mm -hmm. i want to create independent movements because okay. the and, and that really came from coach mo um later in my career the, the hand fighting aspect behind it yeah when everybody's when everybody squats 600 pounds, when everybody's a beast at that next level, the the difference in the pass game is that hand fighting ability, you know, because all your base is the same. Now it's really under feeling and understanding his leverage, mm -hmm. right? That that's and I didn't I didn't get there to for the younger guys, junior senior year of college. Like, you really got to trust your base and have confidence in what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. But then the game moves to there for me. So starting that young, breaking that. Just something other than, you know, winding with your lower body right. Right? and just rolling that tennis ball, staying calm with the upper body. It just separates the movement, right? I don't want to get into to any sort of thing that a D lineman can time up on us. Okay, got you. So, any, so you mentioned, what was his name? Coach Mulder? What was the name? Mogridge. Alan Mogridge. Mulder. Okay. So, any other coaches that you have that, you know, left a snap on you that you use a lot of their tools with your kids? I, I like to take things from every uh, every coach I come a part of. Uh, coach Shankweiler uh, was my O-line coach when I first got to, uh, yeah. to FIU. Donald, yeah, mentioned um, him before. Yeah, yeah and he was, um, I would say stylistically, him and Coach Mo are complete opposites. Um, in the pro style system, in a lot of it's we drilled a ton of footwork. Mm -hmm. you know, getting that down and perfect every single time a lot of discipline with your eyes. Um, and, and he brought a lot of, I would think the things I took from Coach Shankweiler was a lot of small tricks to the game. Like going over that post foot on the inside set. He really believed that if you strain to keep it up, if it never dropped, that D lineman could never get around the hump. Um, so to me, that's, that's something I took with me. And even if you're in a losing position, and yeah. I showed my guys, as soon as it drops, all you're doing is opening that angle that to the gap, inside yeah. of your lineman. You know, I tell them, if I tell you to gain ground with it and to strain to keep it high, you're going to end up being flat because you're you're fighting against 300 pounds of pressure. Right. But if I tell you you can drop it a little bit to recover, it's just going to give way. Yeah. Right. If the strain isn't there to begin with. Um, and again, a lot, a lot of the double team fundamental stuff, like I said, we were heavy, heavy on the footwork. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my footwork stuff was really from him. And a lot of, a lot of the, 
the style the style of coaching I am like I'm flying around I'm doing a lot of demoing mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm in a I'm in a deep sweat and and, right, 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 right. and uh coach Mo man he's I, I love him to death man but I told him to so he's crazy like <laughs> he's flying around like literally cramping up during practice like the trainers mm -hmm. having to give him water he's going right right because right. I, I want my players when they're exerting effort to be in the drill, to mm -hmm. be doing something that I need them to do, not wasting time and, you know, forcing them to run a lap they don't want to listen or whatever. If they're on my team and, and I've laid the foundation of what it takes to get better, those kids should be locked into what I'm saying. And if they're not, man, that's their that's their problem, right? They're they're not out there to get better that day. I'm not I'm not gonna get worked up about it. Got you. Got you. you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to be me and the guys who wanna learn and, and wanna be out there and get the most out of the workout, that's who that's what it's gonna be. Now, I might not yell at you, but I'm going to make some jokes and, and let you know that I don't know what you brought today, but it's not what I saw yesterday and it's not the expectation, bro. So whatever it is you got going on, figure it out. But we're going to we're going to keep it moving over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, the more kind of how I coach and how I relate to players mm -hmm. uh, really came from Coach Mo. And like I said, the hand striking stuff as well. So gotcha. those two guys um, for sure at the college level. And then Coach Luke, man, he's, he's my partner, um, mm -hmm. you know, in this five star studs game. So um when it comes to foundation and, and the hit building and and again the creativity to get these kids inspired man like right. i feel like that's a part of my job too if, if yes. i get out there and, and these kids are dead and you know they don't feel like being there man i had those days when i was 21 and 22 and think about getting paid for this right. if i think these 12 year old 15 year old kids aren't feeling the same way like i'm crazy and, mm -hmm. and the screaming and yelling is not going to get them to feel better I like to take it down to a human level and be like, guys, I get it. Like, it, it's not fun to be out here. But we're either getting better or we're getting worse. If we're just going to throw the day away, we might as well pack it in and go home now. Gotcha. Right? I'd rather you give me 100% for five reps. If that's all you can give me, give yes. me that. Yes. Because I don't want you getting in my drill and going 60%. What, what does that do for me or you? Nothing. I can't coach it because it's not realistic and you're not getting any better. Might as well go chill and grab some water. So what do you got? You guys train out of where in Miami or Broward? So we're actually all around right now. Um, I just got hired at St. Thomas Aquinas to be the O-line coach over there. Um, Congratulations, so, man. Thank you, brother. Thank uh -huh. you. Huge. Um, so yeah, just accepted that job. So uh, I had been doing my sessions after work, but now that I head over to St. Thomas uh, and then Lauderhill Lakes after that, main sessions we do is on the weekend. So we're out of Hollywood on Saturdays at a park. Mm -hmm. um, that's our like main group session for everybody to come to, right. um, and then I do private and small group sessions on Sunday up in up in Fort Lauderdale Holiday Park. Got you. I'll leave a, a little link or um, your caption, your your link from your IG so the kids can follow. You guys have Twitter too or the, a website? We have a website. It's uh, mm -hmm. fivestarstuds.com. Okay. I'm actually just finishing that now. Some of it it looks professional and done. Some of it's. <laughs> Not all the way done. Uh, that's in the process of it. But it's all um, good. They know what you do. We train in linemen, baby. I know it, brother. I know <laughs> it. Um, but like you're starting this, right? With yeah. with the, uh, I think this is more than football. I, I've mm -hmm. watched a lot of your stuff, man, and um, really hitting on the different aspects of it—the the mental health, the, the why, and the how how these kids are thinking. Right. right? And being able to work that. This is the this is the biggest and strongest muscle in the body. Yes. Right. We got to be training this just as much as we're training everything else. Yes. Um, so I, I was excited to get on here and, and talk to you, man, because a lot of that stuff really hit home for me. Um, and I think it makes the difference. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this, this is a little off topic, but it goes into kind of what you were talking about uh, as being your biggest advocate. Mm -hmm. And and the coach put it to me like this my junior year of college. He said, nobody talks to you more in a day than yourself. Mm. Nobody. Yeah. He said, if, if you're not telling yourself the right stuff, that self-talk, how do you expect anyone else around you to? You gotta be the biggest advocate externally and internally, right? And and I think for me, um, I had a lot of things off the field and with my family and stuff that um, that took me on a roller coaster when it came to mental health. Gotcha. Um, missing back to back years, and in the middle of that too, I lost my father. So, wow. you know that that to me, I'm I'm so passionate about that man, and right. um, you know because I I. I kind of found myself falling by the wayside a little bit okay. with some coaches who who didn't put that first, right? Who weren't putting the player and, and the person first. Wow, wow. And really wanted to put football first, man. Like I said, this was never my thing. 
at least in my head. And and that um, that journey that God put me on, man, really he, he really made me come this way. Uh, and when Coach Davis got involved, uh, got hired at FIU, that that staff really took me in. Um, you know, like I said, I had missed two years of football. I wasn't in the I wasn't in the best place mentally. Um, and, and the things they did for me as a man, uh, let right. a, forget about a player. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I do what I do, man. And, yeah. and um, you know, I, I want to coach the the more underprivileged. Like I'm, I'm out. You know, it, it's the I'm the only white guy at Lauderdale Lakes in the whole, <laughs> the whole Optimus Park. And mm -hmm. to me, I don't, I'm not worried about it, right? But mm -hmm. I, I I was in a, an awkward. I guess it's a it's a strange thing, right? I came from a very blessed life. Right. My parents made made a good amount of money. I was able to go to a private school, um, and then my my whole world shifted, and I was more put into an opportunity after losing my father and losing football for those two years. I didn't have any of the things that were holding me up mm. right, through my through my through my whole career. Wow, uh, foundational things, and and I kind of find myself like looking around, like, well, if I'm not picking myself up, <laughs> I'm just gonna fall fall behind, and then. Right. Just be an average dude, which is never something I thought would be. Um, and and having those coaches come in, man, and really really show me that they were player oriented and and person oriented, um, and we were gonna fix that first. <laughs> um, it really they really they really changed my life, man, for real. Yeah. And uh, it's definitely changed the trajectory of it. Mm -hmm. um, and this this coaching is what I want to do, you know, because of because of them and because of because of that. That's dope. And yeah, you never know the people that impact you for the rest of your life. And I had a lot of coaches that impact me. That's why I love doing this as well. And what you said is big and, and setting that foundation for the kids is important. And sometimes I know the optics like, you know, Alabama, big SEC, big D1. A lot of kids get into the recruiting process and that's all they think about. And what my friends, that's why I like doing this. What we talk about is going to a place where they're going to help you become a man. That's very important. Football is just a sport. It's here for a moment, a moment in time, just like you explained. And I feel like we need to paint the real picture for kids and understand you use it as a platform. It's not you. Football does not define the man. You are the man playing the sport. Too many times we take it as, oh, I'm a football player, I'm an athlete. That's just what you do. Who yep. are you as a man? And I feel like that's very important. And instead of people just, you know, shipping their kids off, you should have a real conversation with the coaches that sit in your living room. Yep. It matters, man. It matters. And, and a lot of guys are just worried about X's and O's or what school can I go and take a picture in front of a Lamborghini or how many rings they got on their desk. You know, you. To, for me, and, and I found this out really going into my job, you know, the the, the adult life and choosing my career. Right. For me, it's more about the why they're doing it, right? The do do our uh, core values match up? Mm. Are we in this for the same thing? Because if I get a, if I get around, and it's even another coach, I get around a coach, and all you're talking to me about is how you're trying to elevate and get to another school. Right. That's totally opposite of why I'm doing this. Right, because I, I had opportunities to, to elevate and be on the college level in the GA part and, and really trying to get there, man. But like I said, understanding that, yeah, I was lucky to have these coaches in college, bro, but the foundation I was built in high school, mm -hmm. like it starts so much sooner than that. Yes, it does. Right? And I, and I want to touch as many kids as humanly possible. So by the time they get in that college room, they understand that it's a multi-million dollar business that they're taking a part of, yeah. that it, it is savage out there because those coaches and everybody in that building, they're all living their dreams. They're all at the top of what they do. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think a, there's a lot of sugarcoating going on with these kids right now, man, to not understand that. When you sign your name on that dotted line, they are paying you, whether whether it's in classes or not, bro, they are paying you over $100,000 a year. Show me any other place you can go get a job and they pay you $100,000 a year. Right. It doesn't exist. So, again, you're already the 1%. Yep. You're there. And, yeah, it started at 16, 17, 18. Okay. It, it's going to keep getting younger and younger, <laughs> yep. especially with these new rules. So, yeah. again, I let the kids set the expectation. 
You come to me and tell me you want a Division One scholarship or let alone you want to make it pro and feed your family, I'm going to show you the type of savagery it takes to get there. Mm. And I love this Conor McGregor uh, quote, man. He, he, you got to become savage to this craft. You got to become psychotic to your craft. You're going to lose. In order to get where you've never been, you're going to have to do things you've never done. Mm. You're going to lose parts of yourself that have been weighing you down. And you said, it, you were saying it's on, you know, us to educate the kids. I think right. it's a lot of it is to the kids understanding that if this is what I want, right. like there's no more time for playing around. Right. You can right. enjoy yourself. You know, it's a game. We're still going to have fun. You're young. But if you really want to do what you say you're doing and you really want to make millions of dollars doing it, you got to treat this like it's your job. It's got to be the true number one priority. What you think about when you wake up and what you think about when you're going to sleep. Big time. I got to definitely got to clap it up on I love it. I have a couple more questions for you and I'm going to definitely let you go on about your day. I, I really love this interview. And I love it. No problem. So first off, I like to, I call this the wrap up. Like this is how I kind of wrap up the interview. And, and you're a confident guy. We mentioned confidence at the beginning. So confidence is what to Jordan? Confidence is what to me? Mm -hmm. Um, I always found myself right and I, I like to learn from other people's mistakes. To me, a lot of hearing it from coaches, that confidence and that cockiness, mm -hmm. that was a fine line, right? Mm. So I, I always wanted to be conscious of that, okay? Now, I never ever felt like, no, I don't care if we're playing hockey, ping pong, shooting basketballs, I'm gonna go in it thinking I'm gonna win. <laughs> and that's kind of what Donald talking about it. Like yeah. I, when I came on my official visit as a freshman, <laughs> They came in, all them big D linemen were sitting up there. He's like, oh, you think you can beat these guys? I'm like, uh, yeah. Like, why wouldn't I be able to? <laughs> right? Like, and I got, I got baptized, don't get me wrong. Greg Hickman put me square on my back. Right? But right, right. you got to learn those lessons, man. Um, but again, if you're not coming into it with that mentality, mm -hmm. if you're coming into it with hesitation, right, that's only going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Like, like I said earlier, let, uh, let someone else put the brakes on you, man. Right. You go 100 as long as you can. Right. And then let your coach put put together the pieces. If that makes sense. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. I love it. I love it. So just to segue into that, attitude is what to Jordan? Attitude is everything, man. Attitude is what you can control. Mm -hmm. Attitude and effort. Yes. And and I was one of those guys speaking of confidence. I thought I couldn't control everything. I thought I could control what happened to me in this life really? by working hard. You know, by, by putting more effort in, by, by being smarter. And uh, I came to find out, man, that, that there's only there's only a few things in this life you can't control. Mm -hmm. Very, very few. And and what happens to you and, and the course of your life is going to take is not one of them. Mm. What you can control is where you are at, who's around you, yes. and the attitude and effort you're bringing to that place. I love it. I love That's it. That's it. That's it. So, again, if you really want what you want to do, you got to flip that switch when you're about to go on that playing field, right? My arena's just changed. It's instead of in, in between those lines, I'm on the side of them lines, right? But my my kids, you know, again, they think I'm a little crazy sometimes too. <laughs> Bro, I'm, I'm working in customer relations during the day, right? Like yeah. I'm dealing with customer complaints all day. Bro, if you think I'm not going to come out here and have fun and right. be rowdy and right. ready to go, right. Bro, this is right. my estate. This yes. is... This is my time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like you might have a long day at school and bro, but again, this is football, man. This is a game. If you're not having fun, bro, like what are we doing? But yeah. at that, in that same token, if you're not trying to be great, me and you might are probably not going to get along. Bro. Ah, right. right. At the same time. Cause at some point it might not be the first day or first couple days, but eventually once that bar starts to rise and you you just want to keep fighting me and stay down here it's a disconnect it's going we there's there's going to be conflict right? right right and and that's why i like to i mean right now the the, the goals and aspirations of, of the two teams that i'm coaching is a national championship got you right got so you. there there is no drop off like that is the expectation to be the best in the country got you. um you know and constantly feeding it back to those kids man so so they understand it too but Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm loud, I'm rowdy, I'm going because I, I love it, man. To be honest, this, this is what I love to do. I'm going to bring the energy for them. 
And and I believe that the same, my mindset is the kids will match your energy. And if you come in, like you love it, you enjoy it. I'm not gonna lie, man. I coached at Holly Springs High for a few years and there I had, I have, I have four all conference guys. Those guys, I, I love them. But I, I, I had an opportunity to work with them in middle school as well and watch them grow up. Man, they have a, a game we played in the SWAC championship. And it was a, like a, a national game, a local game. Let me say that. They played it on TV. Dude, every time we score, you can see me jumping on the sideline, jumping on the kids. I have a good time. That's crazy. I love it. I believe you bring the energy and the kids will match you. So I would bring the same energy to practice, the games. I had a good time. It's fun. It's a game. You're supposed to have fun. My kids pancaking guys. I'm jumping, doing backflips, just having a good happy. time. Yes. And to me as a coach, I, I go even further, man. When I'm, when I'm straining a coaching point to a kid and he finally gets it in Indy, I'm yeah. hype. I'm hype. like, let's go. Hype. But now, once you show me once, yes. that's, hey, you in trouble because that's yes. the expectation every time now. <laughs> yes, man. I, I love it, man. I always tell the kids, you know, before a game, I, I like to get in their heads, man. We throw the first punch. I don't necessarily mean to throw the first punch, but I don't mind taking the 15 just to get rowdy. I don't mind. I don't don't be too dirty, but hey, let's go. Let's get the guys going. You know what I'm saying? As a lineman, you have to have that mindset of you got to kill a mosquito with an axe. You know what I'm saying? You you or, or a sledgehammer or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You have to. Catch with a sledgehammer. That's what we say. Axe with a sledgehammer. Whatever. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? You have to have that mentality, and it's a fight. And if you're not going into that mentality, oh, I'm going to knock him out. Oh, I'm going to take him down. It's going to happen to you. Yep. Period. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So to, to segue into mindset, mindset is what to Jordan? I think mindset and attitude are going similar, right? Mm -hmm. I would say attitude is the more immediate reaction. Mm -hmm. Your mindset is something that kind of carries you throughout throughout life, right? That's something it. that's more stable. I love it. Um, that's the way I would think about it, right? Like my, my mindset... I like to I like to go six months, uh -huh. right? I don't like to go too far out because again, you can only control what you can control. Right. But if I got a goal at the end of six months for at least the direction I'm trying to go, I think that's more my mindset. And I need to be waking up with the right attitude, right, to get to that mindset, right, and let that mindset uh, end up becoming consistent through my mm -hmm. actions, mm -hmm. right? But I, I think it's uh, that's that's the difference I would put on those two terms. Got you, got you, man. Like I said, I I appreciate you coming on. We gonna, we gonna clap it up. No, no, man. Thank, thank you, brother. And I want you to let the people know. You mentioned the job that you have, what you have going on, what you do. One more time, and I'll put, like I said, a blurb of your website where to find you, where the kids can come train. If you're in South Florida, this is a great guy. He has great knowledge, great experience. Come train with him. So, Jordan, Jordan Budwick, what do you Jordan have Budwick, coming yeah. up? That, did I say oh, it right? Yeah, Bud, like Budweiser and wig Bud, on your head. Bud, that's, wig. That's yeah, that's why I just hey, said Jordan hey. the whole interview. <laughs> it's, all good, it's all good. But yeah, Five Star Studs, uh, you can find us at fivestarstuds.com. Mm -hmm. uh, our main social page uh, is on Instagram. That's five underscore star underscore studs. Um, those are the, the two main places to find us. Uh, we're in South Florida, man. We have set trainings. Um, but I, I'm willing to travel, uh, and I have. So in, anywhere in, in uh, Broward, Dade, or, or Palm Beach County, um, if you got a small group of guys that want to get together uh, or even train yourself, you know, obviously the price changes based on what you're looking for. Um, I'm, I'm willing to travel and, and make time for it. Um, I want the kids who want to come and be great. Um, so right now, you know, no kids, you know, marriage in the plans for next year, but okay. I'm, I'm trying to get as much of that time right now as I can giving back. Um, because I know once I have a family, you know, some of those yeah. things are going to have to change. So get me while you can right now. <laughs> Saturdays and Sundays are the best day. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, man, I, I appreciate everything. Right. Yeah, man. Thank you, man. Great brother with great knowledge. Like I said, go check him out at Five Star Stud. My guys, go ahead and check out his page. He puts up great, you know, I, trust me, I'm going to steal some of his drills. He put up some great okay. drills for you guys to see. You know, and he, he talks about leverage and balance and everything that you need to learn as a lineman. It's, a, it's a, a lot of nuances to the game. And we have guys like him that can help our younger athletes become greater athletes. So let's go ahead and clap it up again one more time for Jordan. And, and like I said before, 
We all go through that roller coaster of life. Why not have a God to elevate your mindset? Jim, out.